Alors, on commence. Euh, je ne parle français, alors tu vas être en anglais, je suis désolé. Mesdames et messieurs, euh, welcome. Uh, we are Redis. How many of you have heard about Redis? Oh, oh, nice. How many of you are using Redis? Good, good. All right, so I come from Redis. Redis is a, a, an open source database. I'll tell you a little bit about it uh, in a minute, but since most of you here already know about it, we can skip the, most of the parts about Redis itself. Um, Redis is from, but how can I type? Yeah, but, ah, gotcha. All right, so I'll try talking in this mic, but sometimes I'll drop it because I need my hands for the keyboard. Um, so we are Redis, we are Redis Labs. Redis Labs is the commercial company behind Redis. We're the home of the open source uh, project, as well as providers of various commercial services and products, most notably Redis Enterprise and Redis Cloud are on the cloud authoring. And myself, I'm Itamar Haber. I'm a technology evangelist at Redis Labs, uh, which is a fancy title. Basically, I do Redis all the time. I code Redis, I help people with Redis, I learn and teach Redis. And if you have any questions about Redis, please feel free to approach me either here or online. Um, oh, I didn't complete this slide. Huh. All right, so the agenda is a little bit longer, but basically today we're going to talk about Redis gears. But for that, we need to start uh, with Redis itself. So Redis and this is copy pasted from the Redis IO website. The Redis IO website is the home of Redis, the open source product. So you're more than welcome to go for yourselves and look what's in it. But the first paragraph that you'll see at the home page is the paragraph on the board projected now. You don't have to read it all. I tried making some stuff bold. Uh, to make them uh, shout out more. But basically, Redis is a lot of things. It's kind of, people call it the Swiss army knife of databases sometimes because there are lots of things in it. You can use it in many different ways. Uh, many people use it as a cache. Uh, some people use it also as a database. And some of us are even using it as a message broker. Redis itself has a lot of features, I think I said that. Uh, it has many data types in it, all sorts of data types, starting with basic strings, continuing with lists, sets, sorted sets, and some more exotic data types like the hyperlog log, uh, and all kinds of neat tricks, including replication, disk persistence, clustering, Lua scripting. It's a whole smorgasbord of features and it is used widely, actually very, very widely uh, when developing applications, especially web applications that need to be responsive. Whenever I talk about Redis, I try to, after almost seven years doing that, I try to pick the most interesting things or most important things about Redis and sum them in this slide. So first and foremost, Redis is not just a name of the project, it's actually an acronym. It stands for Remote Dictionary Server, uh, as an FYI. Uh, it is pronounced Redis, uh, just as an FYI as well, and it is open source. It's licensed under the BSD3, the Berkeley Software Distribution license, a very permissive license. You can basically take the code, use it in whatever way you want. It also has the best documentation ever. I can fully attest to that because I've recently been promoted to a maintainer of the documentation, so I've been closing issues there and merging pull requests, and I have lots of ideas on how to improve it even further. But that said, the documentation is very clear. I find it very clear, very intuitive. It's like at this level, looking in your eyes, providing you with all the knowledge that you as a developer need 
in order to start using Redis, you can go and check it out. It's up there at Redis.io as well. I mentioned that Redis is a database, an in-memory database at that, that serves data structures, but the fact that it's in-memory and all data is inside your server's RAM for optimal performance does not mean that the data is volatile. Redis can and is actually by default configured to persist all data to the disk. The disk is used for recovery purposes. Whenever the server is started or crashes, God forbid, you can hot load the data from disk. So there is this feature. You don't have to lose your data when you lose power. It was started about 10 years ago by a very talented Italian developer called Salvatore Sanfilippo, or Antires, if you look him up, that's his nickname. Is a prolific uh, developer, is doing all kinds of things, but his biggest project by far until now has been Redis. And uh, he's actually working with us at Redis Labs today, but it's basically his baby. He started this thing all alone. As of version 4, and this is basically what I came here to talk about, Redis also supports a neat little feature called modules. Modules are basically modules. You can load them and unload them. They're sort of plugins or packages that you bring into the server. They're dynamically loaded libraries. You can load them in runtime. And the idea of modules is that they extend the Redis core capability with basically whatever you want them to do. The, the API for, our, for model authors is open, it's in C, you can develop your own modules, and Redis Gears, the topic of this conversation, is indeed a Redis module. It's implemented as a Redis module. Uh, this is as of version 4. Uh, we're currently at version 5 that was released earlier this year, and we expect to have uh, a GA version of Redis 6 by the end of this year. Uh, just to sum it up, two things about Redis to give you an intuition for the one or two of you who didn't raise their hands. Uh, Redis is a DSL for ADTs. This is actually lifted from the Redis uh, manifesto, a DSL, a domain specific language for abstract data types. You as Python developers are familiar with that concept. Python has a rich uh, uh, a very rich uh, body of data structures that you can use right out of the box. You've got your dictionaries, you've got your lists, but you also have sets and so forth. Redis is the same way, but in the database world. It provides all these, the same data structures, actually very reminiscent of Python, but in the database world. So it's a domain-specific language for manipulating uh, abstract data types. And always when you need to explain or you want to think, why should I use Redis? There are two good reasons, I think, for you to use it. The first, it's quite simple. At least I find it very simple. I came from traditional SQL databases and so forth, but Redis is kind of a, a no-brainer in that sense. The other reason is that it's just fast. It's very, very fast. So, when you need performance, you usually go to Redis. To get started with Redis, um, there are multiple ways. I've listed them here. My favorite is just cloning it from GitHub and then running make. It's as simple as that. It just, like in under a minute or so, it compiles and you have everything locally and you can play either with the unstable tip or any of the versions, but you can certainly go and use Docker. If you're afraid of that, it's just a matter of a Docker pull away. There's also a neat, uh, I didn't connect to the Wi-Fi, but on, our, on the website, on Redis.io, if you go to tryredis.io, you can get to a browser version of Redis. It's kind of an interactive tutorial. You can test Redis in your browser just to get a sense of it. Also, last but not least, my employer, Redis Labs, provide a cloud service. So you can go there and sign up. We can, you'll get a free Redis instance in the cloud for life, 100 megabytes. You can use it or not. It's up to you. Um, it's out there. So once you have Redis uh, in your system, 
or running somewhere where whether on your laptop or in the cloud you can connect to it it's a server so you need a client to connect to it I've put here two examples which I'll also show you live but there are basically two ways to connect uh, well only one way to connect to it you open a communication channel with it over the network to a specific port and you start talking to it there is a CLI a client or a command line utility called Redis CLI which comes in with Redis so you can use that but as Pythonistas you'd probably want to do pip install Redis to install the Redis client which is authored by Andy McCurdy one of the top I think, 10 or 30 packages loaded downloaded from pip I'm also a maintainer there and you can use Redis mm -hmm. on Python so let's see how this looks like just briefly I have, Redis, I have Redis running here on my machine. This is Redis. And I can go and type Redis CLI. First thing I'll do is this command. It's called flush all. It basically deletes everything because I don't know what I did before. I don't want a garbage there. This is the command you should run whenever you, you connect in production, right? I'm just kidding. Don't do it. So flush all is a command that always succeeds. It basically kills all the data in Redis. Now that Redis is empty, I can show you how I can set a key in Redis. Redis uses the key value model. So we have keys and their values. I can set the key X to the value 1. And Redis will say OK, which means it's done. I can also do get x and very surprisingly get x's latest value. Another way to connect to Redis is through Python or through the Python client. This looks like this. I'm going to drop the mic for a sec. So I can start up Python, import Redis. Open a connection. <coughs> Using the default connection credentials, meaning the local host, and I'm connected. I can verify that I'm connected with the ping command. I'm connected. And I can call the connection and set yet another key like Y to the value of 2 and even z to the value of 3. So what I have did here, I have basically set three keys in Redis. One I did through the CLI, the other two I did through Python. Basically the same thing. It, it looks the same, it feels the same. The Pythonic client is very oriented towards following Redis in almost the strictest manner, so the API is almost one-to-one. -one. And of course I can get the value. So that's just a little introduction to Redis and what I wanted to show you today is not Redis, it's actually Redis Gears. Redis Gears is something that we've been working on for the last year, year or so in the labs. And if I want to blow your minds, I'll say that it's a serverless engine for multi-model and cluster operations in Redis, supporting event-driven and batch operations and also timed operations. But this is kind of a whole lot of words. What it actually does, it provides you with an almost agnostic way to deal with Redis because Redis comes in different flavors. It first can be run like I'm running it here on my laptop on a single instance or as a single instance. But there's another deployment form which is called a cluster in which Redis is clustered and partitioned across multiple shards. Each shard is a shared only node in the cluster. The data is partitioned or sharded across the cluster. And basically, as a developer, you need 
sometimes to know how the data is deployed because if there are differences if you're working against a single instance or a cluster. With Redis Gears, you don't have to worry about that. The framework basically abstracts that for you. The framework also has a built-in cluster manager coordinator, so you don't have to worry about managing the cluster inside Redis Gears. As long as you have a cluster, Redis Gears will manage itself on the cluster transparently. And what Redis Gears provides you is a way to compose pipelines using a set of operations, basically map and reduce operations, to process the data in Redis and do interesting things with it. Redis Gears is also implemented as a source available project. It's up there in GitHub. You can go and look at the source code if you want or download the source code. The home page is listed here as well so you can read about it. The documentation is there and all the links. Let's see how we use Redis Gears or perhaps a graphic example of what using Redis Gears could look like. So you've got Redis. Redis has a bunch of keys in it, right? And what you can do with Redis Gears is compile, compose a pipeline of operations. At the beginning of the pipeline, which is down here below, you've got your keys and their values inside the database. Redis Gears gets these keys and values using a component called the reader. To get the keys, we use the keys reader, which is depicted above. The keys reader basically scans the database and picks out all the keys from it. The keys, or whatever the reader actually outputs, is, is considered records. And records can be transformed or processed using any map reduce operation. For example, map them. We can map every record to another record. So records get mapped from one type to another until the pipeline is finished. And then the same records, the records, the resulting records are called the result and are returned to the user. This, this next uh, slide basically summarizes what I said. We have a bunch of readers. The more, the more important ones are listed here. So we have the keys reader, which only reads key names. We have the key value reader, which reads keys and their values and puts them into the pipeline. We have another nice reader called the Python reader, which basically lets you implement your own readers in Python. So you can do whatever you want. If you want, you can, I don't know, do a reader that reads your email into the pipeline. And we have a stream reader. The stream reader is a special reader. There's a new data type in Redis called the Redis streams, as is version 5. I'll talk about it a bit later and show you how it works. So let's see a few examples of how we use Redis Gears. Uh, and for that, all the examples are here for you to remember if you'll need a copy of the presentation or something. But I'm going to show you how I'm doing it in the keyboard because no one can read really code like that. So if you recall, I put a few keys in Redis right now. Um, I'm going to do the next. Uh, the following thing. Um, there's a small client we wrote called Redis Gears Client. Ah, I need both fingers. Here we go. So this is the line I was looking for. And if you pip install this, you can do from Gears Client Import Gears Remote Builder. This is a utility that helps you build Redis Gear scripts. It's one of the ways of running Redis Gear scripts, not the only way. Um, and to begin, with, to begin with, I'll just do Gears Builder Run. This basically says, give me the default key builder, uh, give me the default reader, which is key value reader and just run it. So this is going to return all the keys and their respective values inside Redis with that command. I'm not saying this is amazing. You can do it with in a different way in Redis, but this is how a pipeline looks like. It reads all the keys and currently it does nothing with them. It just returns them. But for example, we can also tell 
the pipeline that I want to map each record. So I add a map operation. And the map operation accepts a function, a lambda function, of course. So here we've, go, we've got a lambda function, lambda x. x is the incoming value. And I can do whatever I want with that. For example, I can only return the keys. So instead of returning records that consist of a key and a value, I can return only the key name instead of the entire thing. And you can see that the map operation did just that. It stripped whatever came in, transformed it, and returned it to me. I can also, uh, for example, show something like this. Instead of mapping, I can filter the values. I can filter all the values where x dot value does not equal 3. And the filter operation will run after the key reader and will filter out every record where the value is not 3. So in this case, I'll get both x and y, but I won't get z because z, z is 3. And the pipelines operations are filter, map, flat map, uh, count, aggregate, re all, reduce, all, all the regular stuff that you want and find in all similar frameworks, basically, are also here. I can do something like this. For example, if I'll add another key, uh, let's say t, and let's give it also the value 3. I can change my pipeline now to maybe count All right, so here's a query I prepared earlier. It's the same query, it's the same pipeline. I'm using the same reader, getting all the keys, and what I'm doing here, I'm counting, just counting the values. So I want to count the records, and I want to count them by the value feed, and if I field. And if I run this, you can see that I have three results, one for each of the values in the database, one, two, and three, but because I have two keys, both Z and T, with the value 3, the count is 2 for that. So that's just to whet your appetite and show you what Redis Gears can do. It's a pipeline of operation, which is totally composable. You can put as many operations as you want, one after the other, to manipulate the data. And by the way, feel free to raise your hand if you have any questions. We've got ample time. These are the examples I've shown you right now. We can just skip them and get here. Another example I want to show you now is a little bit more complex, and it involves a bigger pipeline. Let's jump back to the code and look how it looks or see how it runs, try to understand. So before I start it, actually, I want to populate my database. The first thing I do is Redis CLI flush all. Remember, flush all is your friend. Then I'm going to run this Python script, which I prepared beforehand. This Python script does a very simple thing. It takes a text file mm, called, or a tab-separated file. It's called titles, basics, TSV, and it's a dump of 30,000 titles from the IMDB database, from the IMDB database. So Basically, what I have now is a database with 30,000 keys in it. If I look at the keys inside, I can see that all the keys look like this, TT, and then some serial number. If I'll copy the first one and ask Redis, what's the type of that key? Redis will respond, well, this is a hash. I knew that because the script creates hashes, so every title is a hash inside Redis. A hash is a dictionary. So I can do something like age get uh, age keys, let's say, age keys on that key. And all the 
keys inside that hash are listed. So I have the T cons, the title type is an adult film, start year, and so forth. What interests me in this example is the genres field. So if I'll do age get, which is the Redis command for getting a field or fields and their values on this key, sorry, on the genres field, you can see that this film is a comedy, but the film can have multiple, uh, this was a bad example because some films have multiple genres and they're basically stored as a string with uh, commas delimiting each genre. What I want to do now, and this is a typical Redis database, okay, you use it in your application for whatever. What I want to do now is of course do a map reduce on the entire data set and try to count how many films I've got for each genre. So one way of doing this is, of course, pulling all the data to my Python script, starting to build the dictionary, doing the increment, scanning every key, or I can do it with a simple Redis gear script. The simple Redis gear scripts, script looks like this. Where is my IPython? Here is my IPython and load <laughs> this example is also online this is the link to the example and I'll I want to go with you through the example line by line so the first two line the first line is a comment then there's an import then there's another comment and then we get to this line here this line basically says, let's use the gears builder and assign it to a variable. This time I'm not using the default reader, which is the key value reader. I'm using the keys only reader. The keys only reader basically just returns key names, nothing else. The next step, which I add to the builder, is a map step. The map step takes every input uh, record, which is a key name, and, and calls the, red, the execute command. The execute command basically executes a Redis command. So I'm mapping every key name and I'm doing an age get on that key on the genres field just like I showed you in the CLI. So the next map command basically fetches for each key its genres field. Then I'm filtering out all the keys or all the genres that don't have a value. Some, some, t some of the movies don't have a value for genres, so I'm throwing them away. Then I'm doing a flat map, which is another pipeline pipe operation, which takes a record and can split it to one or more records. In this case, I'm using the genres, I'm splitting it. There can be either one or more returned values. Each one of the values from the genres is considered a new record. That's the flat map step. And last but not least, I'm running a count by operation, the count by operation on the genre itself. And then if I and then I run it, of course. Oh, okay. when I press enter, Redis will go to think a little and then return to me with all the films and their genres, or rather all the genres and their counts. It's not a pretty print, but you can see that I have a key. The key is basically the category or the genre, and then there's, there's a count for it. Now, the nice thing about it is that once I wrote this script, I don't care if it's on my computer running in a single instance development mode or even a cluster with 16 nodes and 30 million uh, films. Same difference, same script. It will go and do it and return to me the results. So that's pretty neat, I think. Uh, something that we didn't have up until now in Redis took, to, took us a lot of effort to actually go and code this over and over again with Python or you name the language by doing it inside Redis. Right now we can run this scripts inside Redis, which is a, a very nice thing, I think. So I mentioned the cluster. How does this work in the cluster? I don't, I didn't install a cluster on my laptop. I can do that as easy as, but I wanted to use this fancy animation because it shows better what's going on beneath the, the hood. Um, in the cluster, in the Redis cluster, if you recall, 
the data is sharded. It's partitioned. It's a shared nothing cluster. There are two shards in the cluster. Each shard has a subset that is mutually exclusive of all keys. So the first shard has three keys, key one, two, and three. The second shard has a different subset of keys, keys three, uh, four, five, and six. Totally different keys. However, when I run a Redis script, oh, sorry, a Redis Gears script or execution on a cluster, Redis Gears itself is uh, present on every node in the cluster. My request, my Redis Gear request gets sent and distributed to the cluster. All the nodes work together. And what they do is the following. So let's consider, for example, the example of counting distinct values, very similar to what we've seen uh, right now, just like the genres, but with numbers. So on the left-hand side, a la gauche, we have uh, two basically distinct values, and on the right we have uh, three distinct values. will <laughs> happen once we say, once we send to Redis Gears this, uh, the execution script, is that each shard will perform the extraction, the mapping, basically, from the keys will get the values, and the result set or the record set in each shard will consist of all its respective values. Fair enough? Next thing we're going to do is shuffle the records. So if how many of you have worked with uh, stuff like Spark? None. All right, one, two. All right, so shuffling is what we do, or it's the name, it's the nice name of saying we're going to repartition the data. What we want to do right now is make sure that similar data is located on the same nodes. So the data basically gets sent over the network using hashing and all that uh, good stuff to make sure that each node has a distinct set of values. So in this case, we can see that the left-hand node, chart number one, got all the records that have the value two. That is three records. On the right side, chart number two got all the rest of the records. That is one record with the value three and two records with the value one. The next step after we shuffle or repartition the data inside Redis Gears is, of course, counting them. Each chart goes and counts its records, does the count by operation, sums it up, and sees, for example, chart three, uh, sorry, chart number one will come to the conclusion that it has seen the number three, uh, the number two, three times. And chart number two will come to similar conclusions. The last step in the pipeline on the cluster in order to return to result, the results is basically to pull everything together to one node. We need one node to aggregate the final response before we can return it to the user. This, in this example, is done on chart one. The aggregated results, the processed uh, data gets sent to it, and from there it gets to the user. So this is basically how the things, uh, the, the data flow or the execution plan looks like when you're running in the cluster. That said, as a developer or, or as a Redis Gears users, it shouldn't really interest me. It's totally transparent to me. I run the same script, whether it's the cluster, whether I'm working on a cluster or in a single node. Redis Gears takes the, uh, does the heavy lifting for me. I mentioned that Redis has uh, a new data type and called streams, and Redis is able to generate also stream of events. So Redis Gear supports both these modes. Let's talk about the stream of events first, and then we'll see about Redis streams. So every activity in Redis, every time I set a key or delete a key or update a key or what have you, Redis can be instructed or internally it generates an event. I updated a key. Redis Gears can register to these events and listen to them. Instead of running a script, like I showed you earlier, the last command I used was dot run in order to run the execution, I can instruct Redis Gears to use the registration mechanism, which registers an execution. So let's take this example. 
This example here, can you see it? Almost. Uh, this example here, what it does, it's a very synthetic example, but it goes to show. Um, let's look at the three lines. The first line we have above, up above, basically filters out every key that gets the, the builder. The reader is the same reader, it's the keys reader. So it will fire with every key related event in the database uh, or a new key. And what I'm doing is I'm filtering all the events that have the key name called all keys because the next thing I'm going to do is add to the set under the key, all keys, the name of the key. So basically this script, what it does, it keeps on an ongoing, it keeps an ongoing set of all key names in the database. The minute I add a new key, it will be added into that set. The reason that I'm filtering stuff is in order not to get into an endless loop because whenever I update the old keys set, it generates its own event and I don't want to catch it. Let's see this in action. Just so we don't get... Uh, confused. If I look at the database right now, you can see that there are zero keys in the database. I can, for example, set my favorite key, foo, to the value bar. And still, the database size is right now one because I have just one key in it. I haven't done anything special yet. Now I'm going to run this script I showed you earlier. That's not good. So here's my script. Once I run it, you can notice that nothing really interesting happens. I just get back an OK response. The script has been registered. That's all. Going back to the CLI, I can verify that the database is still just one key. But if I'll set another key, like uh, boo, far, and now run DB size, you'll be able to see that there are three keys. I have my old foo key, I have my new boo key, but what's the third key? So we're going to run this command called keys. It shows all the keys in the database. And you can see that there's a new key in the database called all keys. And if I'll look at the members of that key, basically all the elements inside that set, you'll be able to see the new key that I just added. If I'll run the previous example that creates Oh, all right. Funny. I don't know. I hope I didn't kill Redis. No, it's still up. So some, something borked here. But basically, this simple script is kind of like a monitoring script. Very easily done. Of course, your imagination is the only limitation here. You can build whatever pipelines you want. Um, similarly to this example, because Redis, stream, uh, Redis Gears already supports the streaming notion of execution, so here we are seeing a, a script, a Redis Gears uh, pipeline, that basically sits and waits for events, and once the events fire, it goes and does something. I can leverage the same thing in order to process Redis streams. Redis streams, and this is not the topic of this uh, presentation, but the Redis stream is yet another data structure. Uh, how many of you have used Kafka? Oh, very nice. So Redis Streams is 
very similar conceptually, not implementation-wise, to Kafka's streams. It's a, a stream is an append-only data structure. You add stuff to it down below at the end of it. Producers basically append to it. It's immutable. You can change the data once it's been added. And you have entities called consumers that can read or subscribe to the stream and process it as, uh, as the stream grows. The consumers try to catch up. And Redis Gears supports that as well. I can run this example, uh, but it's going to be whatever, what you expect. This, this example here, uh, let's run it. Let's see how it, it happens. So, I did bark it somehow. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it crashed. All right. No biggie. <coughs> so my database is currently empty. If I run the script that showed this script here, So this guy uses the same Gears Builder client, but here it takes a new type of uh, reader. It's called the stream reader. The stream reader actually goes and reads one or more streams. The next line is a mapping line. It just takes the incoming message from the stream. And what I'm doing here, I assume that the stream is going to have messages that at least have one field called number and that field number will contain a number, and I'm gonna sum up all the numbers that I'm seeing in the stream. So this is kind of keeping a tally on a stream of, I don't know, prices or sales or something. Uh, I'm gonna use another Redis command called incur by, which increments a field or a key with a value. So this is how it's going to look. Once I run it, of course, Redis gear says, okay, this is registered. So I'll go back to my Redis CLI and now I need to start uh, adding messages to the stream. You can see that the database currently is empty. I'll use the x add command to add a new number to the stream. So to the numbers stream, I'm gonna, and you can see that in the last line of the script, I'm registering on the numbers stream, all right? You can see register and then the name of the key number. So I'm adding a number to the number stream with the field number and the value one. Once I've done that, Redis responds with the message ID of the new stream message that I added. So I have a stream, it's called numbers. There are a single message there with that ID. The message itself has fields and values in it. One of the fields is number and the value is one. You can see that I have a new field or a new key in the database now called sum. I only created numbers, but my script created sum. And if I'll do get sum, I should get the sum of all numbers up until now, which is one. If I'll add a couple of more numbers, for example, two, three, and four, and I'll do get sum now. Who knows what's the answer? 10. All right, because 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10. So this is the stream processing, like very quickly, but this is the stream processing capabilities of Redis Gears. You build the script, the execution, and you register it to an event, either a stream event or a key space notification event, and you can trigger any. Um, activity or data processing uh, thing that you want. Questions up until now? Cool. Yeah. It depends on how you configure it. Usually, this is kind of like a side question, but usually when you use Redis and you're worried about crashes, if it's not development, for example, then you build into it high availability in the cluster mode. 
you usually have masters and one more or more replicas for each master. And if a master crashes, the replica can take over instantly. If you don't have any replicas, yes, you'll have to load from disk and this basically just takes time. You don't want to go there if you're in production. So you usually keep high availability with a hot standby, sort of. Yeah. Okay. So what's the difference between the keys reader and the stream reader? The keys reader takes its input from the Redis key space. All the keys in the Redis key space, whether strings, hashes, uh, lists, streams even, it will pick up and try to display the value and let you do whatever you want with it. A stream reader, on the other hand, registers to specific streams, either the stream, either you put it, as I put it, like explicitly, you can also use pattern matching or multiple streams, but you have to tell these are the streams I'm looking at, and then it will register for notifications on these streams. And the values in these streams will trigger the execution. Okay? All right. So, I did want to tell you a little about uh, Redis Gears architecture. And the reason that I'm showing Redis Gears here is not because of Redis. It's because Redis Gears is very tightly uh, integrated with Python. We like Python in Redis Labs. We use Python all over the place for our internal tooling and stuff. Redis itself is built in C but most of our uh, tool chains are Python based. It's, we all love, I think if the audience here all love Python, so I don't need to sell you Python and tell you how great it is. Um, and Redis Gears is built in the following way. So there's a core component of, or core component of Redis Gears. The smarts of Redis Gears is in C, in fact, and all the MapReduce operations, the cluster management, and all the execution management, like registering stuff, distributing stuff, all that is done in C. Uh, this core is exposed or exposes a C-level API. So if you're a C programmer or are a developer in a language that has a C, C API uh, connectivity, you can actually plug into Redis Gears as is. It's a standalone library and you can start using it. However, I'm a C programmer, but it's not the easiest thing to do. It's brittle, it's hard, it takes time. We did want to make this ability more accessible, more usable. We didn't want people to start compiling things just to use Redis Gears. And this is where Python comes in. We do offer a Pythonic API. You've just seen the Pythonic API, which basically lets anyone, because I think anyone can do Python. It's one of the easiest languages ever. Um, just jump into the action and just use its own, like use regular Pythonic syntax to start working with Redis. It's not just Python itself. You can use whatever Python package you want. You just pip install it and use it inside your Redis gear script. So we're opening the world here to, to anyone who wants to extend Redis or do stuff that it's harder to do inside Redis right now. We are planning on more languages to support, supporting more languages API. Probably Java is next, but uh, currently this is the only thing that's actually out there. Um, so the C API that Redis Gears exposes is used by an embedded Python interpreter that we put inside Redis Gears. The Python interpreter uses the C API to, con to interact with Redis Gears. And you use the Python interpreter to interact with the entire thing. There are several big uh, advantages using this model. The first is that it's very, very fast, comparatively fast or performance is derived from the fact that we have direct access 
to Redis's objects. We don't need to copy stuff. We don't need to move stuff too much. We don't need to allocate memory. So we're both fast and efficient in that term. And another neat feature is that we actually took the memory allocator from the embedded Python and instead of using the default memory allocator, we pr we've provided it with Redis's memory allocator. So right now, any memory that the interpreter consumes is also accounted for under the Redis process and can be monitored and managed as part of it. So that's the cool part. There are a few challenges uh, and if any of you have ideas on how to solve some of them, I'd, I'd love to hear because we were kind of stumped with the last two. Um, so one of the biggest challenges is that two different clients basically share the same interpreter. We have just one interpreter inside Redis Gears, a single Python interpreter. So everyone shares the same interpreter. That means that if I install image magic, or OpenCV, then everyone has, everyone inside this Redis server has access to the same packages that I'm using, which is not so great, but it is what it is right now. There's also no concurrency. If you've heard about the Python Gil, it's kind of a thing. Um, there were rumors that it would be solved in the last version, that it's 3.8 had a promise that this will be uh, alleviated to a degree, but when 3.8 came out on October, this feature was missing from uh, the release. So hopefully it will be re resolved in the future release of Python. Right now we're limited to a single running script at any given time. But the real problems, at least as we see them, are uh, basically security and stability. Um, security, you can pull in anything into Redis right now with Redis Gears. Redis tries to be somewhat protective of the data and what it does, but once you've put Redis Gears into it and you've pip installed the entire will of the world into it, uh, there's no going back. It's a big security breach. And furthermore, the, the real uh, the real cause for concern is the fact that the Python code or bytecode or interpreter is running in the same memory space or under the same, under the same process as Redis, so potentially a bug there can crush the entire database server, which is a very, fri a very, a very frightening thought, like they don't let me in production because I flush all, so that's good, they can block me, but how do you block crashing code? that's a little bit more uh, difficult. So these are the challenges that we're currently facing. We've tried sandboxing Python in different ways. We're still to hit uh, a good spot with that. Um, another thing I wanted to talk to you guys, the Python guys about is how we use that uh, single in interpreter. So initially we did have just one interpreter uh, and we used that. Uh, but then we think about what happens if you have two Gears scripts running and each one of them begins with this line, global counter, and you're using the same interpreter. Uh, it's a world of pain. You don't, you don't want to go there. It's not working. On the other hand, using an interpreter per client is just too expensive. You don't spin up a whole Python runtime for every script. It's, it's ludicrous. Uh, it takes a lot of resources and drops the performance. So what we've found, or what we are using, are sub-interpreters. Sub-interpreters is, uh, is a Pythonic feature, which basically almost totally allows you to run in your own isolated environment. The C API for Python provide three calls to instantiate, resume, and terminate a sub-interpreter. Spinning up a sub-interpreter is very, very fast and also because it's kind of a light, it's a sub-interpreter. It, does, it doesn't cost as much as a full-blown interpreter. Uh, and internally we manage the connection or association between the user executions and the sub-interpreter that they use. The same 
sub-interpreter gets reused by the same script. So if I did do something like global counter in my script, this sub-interpreter will return to me. So it will be consistent. My counter will come back to me in, pre in successive runs. And even if I register something from inside a sub-interpreter or spawn new scripts inside a single sign interpreter, these will inherit the same sub-interpreter, that is, they'll get the same context. So that's, that's Redis Gears, but we wanted to finish with a nice demo, because all I've shown you up until now is just black uh, background and semicolor text. So I wanted to show you a uh, Perhaps not the most useful application for Redis Gears, but something we've done with Redis Gears. Before I can show it to you, I need to tell you a little about something else called Redis AI. Who can guess, take a very wild guess, what is Redis AI? So, don't worry, I'll tell you. Redis AI is, prepare, it's an AI thingy for Redis. Yeah, yeah. It's also a module, we've also started that, like, almost two years ago. It's very different from Redis Gears. It's aimed at a totally different uh, area that is of machine learning. Uh, the basic premise is that any of you d dabbed in machine learning in any form up until now? One, two, three, four. All right. I'm sure more of you will because it's one of the hottest subject trends right now. It's basically old stuff that we've also always known, but it's becoming easier nowadays to, de to, to develop uh, machine learning models. The real problem that we've identified is once you've got your machine learning model ready after you've trained it with all kinds of stuff, is how do you actually take that model and deploy it and run it in production? Uh, and we thought that Redis had enough uh, credit to its name as a production server. And the nice thing about machine learning is that basically we figure it, we, we realize that if your data is already on Redis, if you're using Redis as a database, then why not use machine learning modules on that? So Redis AI is yet another module from Redis Labs. You can go look at the sources, download it, use it. It supports multiple backends, that is TensorFlow, Onyx, PyTorch, more to come. So you've got your current existing model that you developed or your data scientists or whomever it is developed in some backroom and they give you the model. You load the model into Redis, the machine learning model, and the Redis AI module can serve it with uh, special data types that it adds, such as tensors. Tensors are like the, the biggest thing in AI. Tensor is the input and the output, basically, for models. And tensors is, are just arrays. It's a, another word to say array, basically. So you store these arrays, these tensors in model, in, in Redis. You store the module, the machine learning model, in Redis. And you ask Redis to run the model on the tensor and give you back the result. What can you do with that? Well, you can do with that a lot of things, but what we've done with that is the following. Not this. We built a very sophisticated mechanism that you can actually also download and just start playing with. It's fully dockerized, so I'll use the docker um, environment now. So I have a Docker Compose file which is also online uh, under the Redis Gears repository. This basically loads up Redis with Redis Gears and two servers. The servers are here show you. Here we go. So this is the first server. This is the second server. On the left, the server at port 3000, uh, I need
need to fire up another process for this to work. Just a sec. All right, you see that handsome fellow? So on the left, you've got uh, my webcam. And the webcam is captured by a Pythonic process. The image that you're seeing is being uploaded to Redis and stored inside the Redis stream. So basically that JPEG image is a, is a message in a Redis stream. And I've got a gear script on that stream writing that uses the Redis AI module to find out or answer the critical question, cat or not? Chat ou n'est pas un chat? Alors, moi je ne suis pas un chat, je crois. Mais... C'est un chat. Et... Oh, alors. Et à la droite, il y a un chat. C'est Kyo. Il est mon chien. Mais il n'est pas un chat. C'est un lion. I'm a, this is my sign, by the way. I'm a Leo. But it's also not a cat. Let's see if we fool the model entirely. All right. It recognizes a cat. Um, the model is called MobileNet. It's a standard model, machine learning model that recognizes, does object classification. We basically took it as is, dropped it into Redis, built this uh, big, well, it's not that big. You can look at the script, the Redis Gear script that monitors the stream and does the decision and we display only cats. So this is just one application that is possible with the infrastructure or the framework that we call Redis Gears. If you have any more, any questions, I'd love to answer them. Uh, we're out of time, actually, so I'll take your questions uh, at the back. Thank you, guys.